We are back with legendary wide receiver Herman Moore. Herman, Lions win the NFC North. Getting straight into it. Your thoughts, your excitement, how happy are you? Hey, you know what, Mike? I am extremely excited. I'm, I'm holding back the energy right now because everyone wants to talk about this 30 years. Man, I, I get it. 30 years is 30 years. But there were there was some success that was there in the 90s. Yeah, we didn't go to the, the championship games and all these other things. We won a you know, division title or two or whatever. But just the excitement that is back in Detroit Lion football. That that that's where I want to begin and end in my conversation. They are back. They have done what many of us thought was was doable, but we knew they had to put in the work. They put in the work. This team has gotten to a place that they deserve to be right now. And that is not only in the postseason you know, play, but they have a division title. They have an opportunity depending on how this thing rolls out the rest of the year to actually get a buy and a home game. I mean, this is, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is a phenomenal year and super excited uh, to watch what has happened with this franchise, with this team, with the commitment that has been made and just the fans that have stuck through this and being on the outside of this and being away from the game and retired and actually having to take their position, even though I'm a, a Detroit lion alum, I understand now what the frustration has been and how you have to continue to support and continue to, to believe in what's being built. Now what's been built is something that um, I think is, is not, it's not fabricated, man. It's not fake. This is real. Absolutely real. Talented top to bottom offense, defense, special teams. The roster looks good and we're getting healthy too at the right time. And just like you guys sub should subscribe to this channel it does help grow just like when uh, players get healthy, it grows the wins and the momentum. So subscribe to the channel lines getting healthy at the right time. And they're going into Dallas who has lost two games. We're seeing the Philadelphia Eagles. They've, they've barely just won before that they're on a losing streak. 49ers lost. You, you know about playoffs, you know about what it takes. Isn't it good for a team right now? That's now on a winning trend going into the playoffs instead of like on a downward trend where they're backing in. It is. You, you want to have the uh, ascension that they're having right now. You want to see a team that is building, not, not about the momentum. They're, they're building in their discipline. They're building in their focus. They're building in their play and their, their ability to be not it's even the attack mode that I've seen them offensively and the aggressiveness that they've, they've brought to the table uh, defensively, and there just seems to be um, a, a maturity that has happened over the process, not only of just this year, but it's been the last couple of years in the making. And coming off of the success they had ending last season, I know many of us were looking at this and saying, how real is this? But this team has carried that over, and and they, they've remained very focused. And I think they've stayed humble, too. Now, there, there are some times, obviously, when they, I think they've caught some teams by surprise, uh, they've done some things that, you know, in terms of winning games that, you know, statistically you would normally not win. But to their credit, a win is a win. And uh, I like seeing what they're doing. And, yeah, it's momentum uh, to a certain degree. But it's it's the discipline and the focus that I see that's really carrying this team right now. What have you seen from Dan Campbell from beginning to end to how he has changed this culture. I mean, Matt Patricia, in my opinion, destroyed this this franchise. It re like we were respectable before Matt Patricia. He came in here and it just decimated the roster, destroyed the franchise. I, I thought took it back. What did Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes do to change this thing around so quickly? Well, I think what they did to turn this around is they went out and they got players. <laughs> they went out and they didn't overspend versus I said this all along, they developed the talent. They brought in players that I think people miss in their scouting. Um, and they have a different way, obviously, in which they went out and evaluating players. And it proved to be really the right mix. Because even you look all the way back to the this past year's draft, you know, looking at a Laporta, looking at a Jamar Gibbs and, and going, okay, what are we doing? And then you're letting go uh, Swift and Williams last year. And you're trying to figure out, okay, how do you replace that? And And they had a plan and it came to fruition. It, it actually worked out, I think, as best they, they could. And the biggest thing is keeping guys healthy. Uh, so when you look at how this all comes about, it's starting with going out, bringing in the right people who know how to, to not only find talent, but to develop it. And the combination of that is what's led to Dan Campbell having an effective offensive staff, defensive staff, 
And they've been able to put this together in such a methodical way that I don't think anyone saw it coming and, and that it would actually come together like it has. And it's paying off in big way uh, for this organization and for this franchise. So th this is something that uh, once you build it this right this way, you built it the right way, you build it with foundation, you don't have to worry about going back and saying, you know, look at the mistakes we've made because you can correct it because you know where everything is. You know where the problems lie. You've been around some great players, great running backs. What do you see when you see Jameer Gibbs? This guy, to me, lightning in a bottle. He makes people miss. His cuts are ridiculous. Top end speed. You know, a lot of people mock the Detroit Lions for taking him 12 in the draft. I think they, they look out. And Mike and Jameer Gibbs, what do you see from this player? Can he elevate his game even more? Do you see this guy being very successful for the Detroit Lions in the playoffs? Yeah, well, with Jameer Gibbs, I, I see a running back that has a a a, a really good for rookie uh, balance and center of gravity on his cuts, meaning he doesn't get too overextended one way or another. He keeps his weight very centered. And when he makes cuts, he's making them with a low center of gravity, but he's making it with a good gather underneath them when he makes the cut. So his cuts are very precise and then he accelerates out of it. You know, it's not, it's, it's one thing to make a person cut. And we've seen players who can make people miss and they can make cuts, but it seems like their momentum and everything stops and they shift, but he's making cuts while he's still moving. And when he does it so fast, if you look at that last one, I mean, it was like, I thought somebody just, you know, just threw the guy from Minnesota to the side because he completely missed in a wide open thing. I, the last time I saw that was Barry Sanders when he threw that move on to uh, John Lynch, but this was even worse um, because he did it at full speed and it, the hesitation wasn't as, 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 you know, delivered as you saw with Barry, but he, he just has some moves and he has size and speed and he, and he, he runs hard and um, he's just, he's just bringing a different, thing to the table. And then when you put David Montgomery in the mix with that, I mean, this just becomes, and I mentioned this earlier in a couple of our, our shows, Mike, that um, definitely you got to look at and say, this is probably the best tandem in the NFL in terms of running backs uh, in the backfield. And then you put them behind such a great offensive line uh, that's really, really gelled and come together. And it's going to be together for a while. This this is a, a pretty impressive unit. Uh, but with Jameer Gibbs, I mean, yeah, a lot of people didn't think that perhaps he should have been taken as high as he was taken. Uh, but we did hear some people come on and say, listen, they've seen Jameer Gibbs and they've seen what he's done in college and that Detroit Lions will not be disappointed, even though he wasn't on anyone's radar. And it proved again to be, ex someone did their homework. They didn't get lazy. They didn't get sloppy in, in terms of their evaluation of a player. So yeah, it, it's amazing player. Ma amazing player at this young age and very excited to see what he does going forward. When you can run the football, I think you can beat anybody legitimately on the road, and that's why they got a good road record. That's why they should be feared in the playoffs, is they can compete with any team. And I know it sounds crazy, oh, it's the Lions. Yeah, it's the Lions, man. It's a run <laughs> team. And they can pound you in the face just as good as San Francisco can, in my opinion. They, they can, and, and a lot of that goes to the offensive line. I mean, it starts there and it ends there. I don't care if you're talking about passing or running. Uh, it's going to start with the guys in the trenches. They've done a really good job of making sure that they're solid on the edges. They're solid on the inside. And they got a really good center. OK, uh, one of the best in the NFL. And in doing that, you have a offensive line that reminds me a lot of what we faced uh, when we had our line in Kevin Glover, Lomas Brown, uh, Jeff Hardings. You know, whenever you can bring guys back and you can you can rotate when you lose a guy you bring a guy um the lions did that for a, a period of time there in the 90s and then it just got away completely and just kind of fell apart a little bit but now they put together like what you saw that dynasty that you saw with dallas you know everybody talked about the offensive line that made them super bowl champions and allowed their passing game and their running game to excel it's going to start and it's going to the lions in the playoffs will win and lose based on how well the offensive line plays that skill put position players are there they're gonna they're gonna make their plays if given the opportunity but it's all going to come down to how the offensive line performs when the offensive line is starting with the starters were undefeated and that just and, and it shows too because they're just dominant 
They're on offensively. You can't stop the Lions' offense when their starting five is completely healthy. They're just that good, and they can compete with anybody 100. percent For the season Agreed. start, you said you wanted to see Jameson Williams uh, show a little more confidence, catch the football in the air, and now he's doing that, Herm. Like when I'm looking at Jameson Williams, I see a confident guy. The ball's coming right to him. It doesn't matter if it's a middle, if he's going to take a hit. He's looking good. What do you see from his growth and development from you saw from the beginning of the year till now? The first place I'm going to start is, and I, I mentioned this to everyone, the confidence. I watched him in college. I watched what he did in college. He was a hands catcher. He caught the passes in his in his, his body when he first got here. You could see that there was a lack of confidence. You know what it reminded me? It reminded me a lot of what I've done and what I've seen other receivers who are hands catchers do when you lose a little bit of, of, of confidence, meaning you're not quite sure of certain things, whether it's picking up the offense, whether it's adjusting to the, the play calls or or being a part of the, the system or whatever it may be. But there's a distraction that's taking place. But now I see that this young man doesn't have it. And I, I saw and I knew that this wasn't fool's goal. And in Jamison Williams, what you have is a bona fide you know, guy that can stretch the field, make some big plays. He's going to be a big piece and a pivotal piece to this team. I think if they're going to advance in the playoffs, he's going to have to make some big plays. They still don't need to forget about, um, they, they, they must not forget about Josh Reynolds. They still have to have a healthy dose of Raymond and rotation of players. You know, Amara Ross St. Brown's going to be the one that everyone's going to look at. He's going to get his plays, but I think you can free him up to let him do his thing by getting the ball to these other players. But I think Jamison Williams is your is your gatekeeper to keep you know defense very honest, honest and not just deep footballs, but in deep throws, but in the middle and clearing out guys because they see when they get the ball in his hands quick, he's he threw some moves on. He's made some guys miss. Mm -hmm. He's he's throwing some spin moves and he is not afraid of contact. So this is a tough guy. Watch how he blocked. And, and I'm throwing that out at him. And I said this about DeAndre Swift and not to go back and digress, but I said, there's some things that you can see in players and sometimes they may not fit the system long term, but it does not mean they're not talented players. Swift, it was all about his help getting healthy with Williams, uh, uh, with um, uh, J-Mo. What I see is that it was just a matter of, you know, getting into the football, let him build his confidence, let him get acclimated to the, the NFL. And that means not sitting on the sideline doesn't mean avoiding him, uh, getting him passes. It doesn't mean because he's had a couple of mishaps, you stop throwing the ball to him you figure out a way to get him the ball and let him make a difference. And he has been. The confidence, I agree with you, it's, it's through the roof right now. It was a great, astute observation from last year, and it looks really good. Lions traveling to Dallas. Big game, right? Lions win this game. They control their destiny of the number two seed, potentially the number one seed. Lions are not favored to win this game. We're six-point underdog. I think we should be underdogs because Dallas is undefeated at home. What do you see from this game? Can the Lions pull it off? What do the Lions need to do to go to Dallas and get a W? Well, right now, obviously, the Lions have to shift what they're playing for. Right now, it's it's playoff positioning. Uh, you've already you know, checked off a couple things on your box. You've checked off the fact that you need to um, get into the playoffs, win your division. And now it's about how can you get that by? Or can you, you know, you know, as far as the home games go, how many of those can you have? Uh, so that you can advance in the playoffs and, and do those things. But it starts with it's still you got to go through and win these games on the road. I think for this, this is a confidence builder for them because they may be on the road in the playoffs. Right. That's a good possibility. That's a great chance that that could happen. And if that's going to happen, win the big games on the road now, win it against teams that are vying for playoff positions or they're looking to be you know tough and they haven't lost any games at home. That's what you're getting in the Dallas Cowboys. So this is a good test to find out if your team is you know, ready. And if, if not, what do you need to do to adjust so your team plays better on the road? So this is this has a lot of great things in it for the Detroit Lions and uh, another one of those games that's going to be very key and pivotal for us to watch. Thanks for hanging out, Herm, talking some Detroit Lions, and uh, we'll definitely get to back, back to it next week. What do you got to tell the folks why they should subscribe to this channel? Always subscribe because... We love having you here on the channel. I love for you to subscribe because we just want you to subscribe because we want to grow our damn channel. That's why. That's one of the main <laughs> reasons to do it. And just because we're passionate about Detroit Lions football, it's been a great year. You've been great to us. We want to be great back to you, delivering great content. Mike, you keep holding it down. Let's go, Lions. Let's get ready for our postseason.
Let's get this postseason run all the way to the Super Bowl. With that said, folks, adios.